Hi, I'm Robert McClemon. I'm an Associate Professor of Geography and Environmental Studies at Wilfrid Laurier University. Along with Colin Robertson and Hayden Lawrence, I'm one of the co-founders of a research project called rinkwatch.org. It's a citizen science project and what we do is we ask people who maintain backyard and community rinks like this one to submit data about the skating conditions on their rinks. We pool that data from all across North America and we use it to track trends in winter weather conditions and we hope over the long term to learn about climate change and its impacts on winter outdoor activities here in Canada and in the United States as well. I think there's two ways that climate change could affect the Winter Olympics in the future. The first one is that the International Olympic Committee is probably going to look a little more closely at the candidate cities in the future to make sure that they're not situated in environments that are warming too much. To give you an example, Lake Placid, New York hosted the Winter Games in 1932 and again in 1980, but that's an area where science has shown that it's warming fairly rapidly and by 2050, for example, it may not be cold enough or snowy enough enough there to host uh, the Winter Games. So that's one way that I think climate change is going to affect. It's going to affect the nature of the host cities. The other way I see there being an impact is on future Olympians themselves. You know, when you look at a lot of Canada's greatest winter athletes, they learned how to skate on neighborhood rinks like this one. They learned how to ski at little community ski hills. They learned how to slide in the, on the hills in neighborhood parks. And those are the types of spots that are going to be most impacted by uh, climate change in the future. So I get a little bit concerned when I think about a future where kids have to go indoors to go skating, where they have to go to a high mountain resort to learn how to ski. That makes uh, outdoor activities in winter a bit more of an exclusive activity. And so it may not be within every family's uh, ability to give their kids that dream of becoming a Winter Olympian in the future. So that's where I see the real long-term impact of climate change on the Winter Games. I'm looking forward to the long track speed skating for a couple reasons. One is that when all the other skating activities had gone inside, the long track speed skaters were still doing the Olympics on outdoor tracks. It was in 1988 at the Calgary Olympics, the first time that long track came inside. Before that, the, the, the tracks were always outside and the racers were not just competing against themselves, but they were competing against the elements, the snow, the wind, the sun. I still remember the 1980 Olympic Games in Lake Placid. The track there was in the front yard of the high school and you could see the snow and the mountains and the trees in the background. It was just like a postcard. So I'm going to be looking forward to the long track at Sochi. It will be indoors at the Adler Arena, which they've built with glass walls so that it will look like the long track racers are outside when in fact they're inside. I still think it would be kind of exciting if they were back outdoors, but just the same, it's such a beautiful race. The, the racers are so fast and so graceful. I'll be looking forward to that one in Sochi.